that we call as discovery. And it, or is it um, just one of the things that you do amongst a suite of others? Where they are, where they like to go. <laughs> <laughs> we try to make an impact on kind of a biopsychosocial front. Welcome back, everyone. This is Simon Phillips. This is the Lead in the Field podcast. And my very special guest today, Jen Wagner, all the way from the United States. I'll let Jen specify exactly where she is because it, it's not that big, but I suspect... It, <laughs> <laughs> Jen is the founder and CEO of We Prosper. WeProsper.co, if you're on the internet, go and find it. It's a really excellent website to clarify some of the things that we're going to be talking about today. But Jen is all about empowering women to thrive. Jen, welcome. How are you doing? Thanks, Simon. It's so great to be here. Thanks for having me on. Um, I'm doing great. Yeah. So I'm over in Park City, Utah, and it's so fun to be able to connect with you and your audience in a different location. And so I really appreciate you taking the time to talk. Tell us a little bit about your background. Tell uh, the origin story. Where does all this start? Absolutely. So uh, in the United States, I was a Division One college athlete, so kind of playing athletics at the highest level you could in college. I was a soccer player. After college, I went and got a master's in exercise physiology and spent some time in that world and then went on to medical school. Um, and then I did a couple residencies and a fellowship and ended up being subspecialized in pediatric anesthesiology by the time I left medicine. So we moved to Utah in 2017. And to be honest, I kind of had my dream clinical job. I was working in a small nonprofit almost charity children's hospital in Salt Lake City and mm. really had the ability to care for patients in the way our team thought it was best to care for patients. We were held to the same quality standards, but we were not held to the same profit standard that a lot of hospitals are are held to. Um, and okay. so we could really spend a lot of time with patients and families. It was just a great environment. It was a great demonstration of how really teams should work. We just, over the last couple of years, started talking about how do we combine our experiences and our energy and our passion about bringing some of this performance training to women and create something to go and present to the world. And so that's how Prosper was kind of developed and born. As I said, there is this crossover in your background between um, medicine and human performance. Does that provide a big backbone for We Prosper or or is it um, just one of the things that you do amongst a suite of others? That's a really good question. I think that it provides a level of authenticity that we can talk about some things, especially when we're talking to women who a lot of their challenges tend to be stem from some biological and physiological differences that we can get down into those details rather quickly and have a level of understanding. So it provides space to have those questions for um, and have those conversations for sure. And, I, and so I think I've been really fortunate that my background can lead us into areas where maybe some of my other teammates or even some other companies in this space don't necessarily have as easy access to. If we think about the big question, the one that you said, mm -hmm. you know, the work that you were observing before you put this group together mm -hmm. looked like it was ignoring 50% of the population, if you like. Mm -hmm. What is it that you're tackling first on that specific issue? What, what do you think you really tune into greater than, than you've seen done before? I think the main thing is asking the questions. I think that really going into some of these groups and saying, how are you feeling? Um, most of the groups that we're starting to work with have contacted us for a specific reason, whether they have a cohort in their organization that is lacking confidence or having trouble with communication or having trouble saying, putting up boundaries around work, around life and how to navigate those. So, I, you know, it's it's interesting that every group comes with a little bit of a different ask. I think the first place to start is no one has in turn to ask them, why do you feel this way? What what do you see that is impeding your ability to be optimized? You know, and like you mentioned, it is very holistic. You know, it is maybe it is something that they think is in work, but it turns out they're really not sleeping or recovering well. And so yeah. I think it's just the, the initial step and kind of, we have kind of a three phase 
offering. And the first step is that we call is discovery. And it really is just going into the room and creating space to listen and um, help them decide where the best place to start is. Because I think oftentimes they're not even being asked those questions and given that opportunity to share those experiences and stories. Jen, let's take a quick break and we'll come right back. Welcome back. This is Lead in the Field with Simon Phillips and my very special guest, Jen Wagner. We've been talking all things performance, polishing, and even uh, sport medicine. I, I don't think we've solved world peace yet, Jen. So maybe we can do that in the second half of the program. No problem. I'm ready. <laughs> um, so, Jen, you were telling me about you know this great work that you are doing with your clients, helping that 50% of the workforce, if you like, to to thrive. And I, and I want to get back to the word thrive with you in a moment. But tell us a little bit more then about some of the things that you find yourself doing on a day-to-day -day basis with your clients. Absolutely. So I think one of the things I noticed in the performance community is that there were a lot of teams and groups that were really great about coming in making an immediate impact, accelerating growth. But then we would return those individuals into their environments with a lot, with not a lot of support underneath. And so people were really regressing once we, they got back in their normal environments because they just didn't have that continued support underneath. So at Prosper, that's become a really critical component for us. So we spend the first phase really deeply listening, like we've chatted about um, listening to our client where they are, where they like to go, what obstacles they see, and then what obstacles that we might see as outsiders mm. and mm. that they maybe have blinders onto or are not aware of or have never even considered. You know, I think that that's one benefit of us having such a multidisciplinary team is that we bring experience from so many different arenas that we can help identify places where we can assist in optimizing that clients don't even know exist. And then we, we really work on creating a roadmap and some foundational principles. So we definitely want our clients to feel like they're walking away with a toolkit of how they can handle certain situations and having a deeper awareness of themselves and how they respond in certain situations. You know, are you a person that locks up when you're under stress? Are you a person that gets easily distracted if you're not sleeping or, you know, and be able to self-regulate a little bit better to feel like they have control over their own situation, regardless if the environment they're in is controllable or not. And then the the biggest point is after we do some of this really in-depth work is to provide a coaching platform underneath them that creates a little bit of a sense of accountability, but also just serves as a resource to say, how are you doing? How is this going? Where can we fine tune for you as an individual to continue to thrive in your goals and your journey? I love that. I guess you're tuning into the emotions as well as the day-to-day the -day routines and processes there. Yeah. We try to make an impact on kind of a biopsychosocial front. We're all humans. We all have certain biologic and physiologic needs. We are social creatures. We have, you know, there's a social community, there's a social impact. And then there's a definitely a cognitive, emotional, even spiritual component that is really important and often overlooked. And I think when I left my graduate school training in exercise physiology, performance had a very narrow scope in my mind. It was run faster, jump higher. Um, it was very much athletically based. And coming back into the performance world, 20 plus years later and really seeing that it's, it's much more than that. Yes. You know, we can take a group of athletes and I am not the right person to do that. This is not the type of performance that Prosper is doing. Um, we, we know how to do that. We know how to make people run faster and jump higher, but are we really looking at the whole person? And so performance has taken a much more holistic definition for our team that we really want to make sure, you know, do you feel like you belong to something larger than yourself? Do you feel that you have the right social support and connections in addition to being internally optimized as much as we can help people? Jen, thank you, thank you so much for taking some time out of your obviously incredibly busy diary to come and talk to me today and, um, and share some of those thoughts with the audience. That's been fantastic. But before you go, nobody gets out of here without telling us what record they'd like to add to the leading the field playlist um, so what's the tune 
that inspires you or helps you in those moments when you're uh, maybe feeling like you need a little bit of an uplift? What is it for you? Well, you know, I would be remiss right now. I have two teenage daughters and we are in deeply in Taylor Swift world. Um, <laughs> so I would, and you know, I think it, it kind of correlates really well that this amazing woman is like supporting the world right now. I mean, I think her U.S. tour, mm-hmm. she was solely to like raised our GDP in the United States, two to 3%, just her and everything wow. related to her. So um, I know it's not, it's not a classic, but um, right now I think Fearless by Taylor Swift is kind of my mantra and kind of keeps me going and reminds me to be brave um, when I need to be brave right now, starting this new adventure and doing things that are hopefully inspiring change in the world, but are definitely inspiring change in myself. And I'm not always comfortable with change. And so I need to be reminded sometimes to keep going. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Thanks, that thanks. was Jen Wagner from We Prosper. And uh, well, I mean, I'm still... My mind's spinning right now about just some of the little insights that you gave there. So thanks for that. You've been listening to Leading the Field here with Simon Phillips and look forward to catching up with you again next week. Take good care. 